Thank you, Jesus. So keep on giving. Because. Because it's really true. No matter how hard you try, oh, and the Lord, the Lord is in heaven. Yes, he is. believe it tonight God so will keep do that. on giving because, because it's really true well oh, you, you can't can't be God giving oh no, no matter, matter how hard you, you try. try no, no matter, matter how hard in other words God dares you to give you try Hallelujah. Has everyone given that wants to give? Here come a couple more. I'm always encouraged when the last people come because that means that they obeyed God and gave the bigger amount. Amen. Now the battle's over. Turn to your neighbor and say, the battle's over. Before I minister the word, I will not, uh, if I may, for you that don't know it, this is my son on the keyboard, and he has started less than a year ago a church here in West Palm Beach. And on Sunday morning, we're going to be right back here. That's right. For the morning service, talk to the people about the church. The Lord put it on our heart just over a year ago, and we launched in March. And I'm telling you, God gave us a mandate to raise up a body of believers that will not just settle for church as usual that are hungry to see a move of the Holy Ghost that want to see God shake this nation one more time before Jesus comes as so that's what we're doing we're pressing in to see miracles and signs and wonders it's already been supernatural to see what God's done I see many of our church people here tonight but I've made up my mind that we're not going to see another generation taken by the devil but we're gonna see our children our grandchildren serving the Lord we're going to see addictions broken. We're going to see sickness healed. We're going to see families restored. We're going to see people come into the kingdom before the rapture takes place. And that's what we're doing at Miracle Word Church. I want you to join us this Sunday. We're right back here, 11 a.m., and it's going to be a powerful, powerful morning. I love you. Amen. Some of you were here the other night. You heard my wife jokingly say, I never saw this coming. And that's this book I read. It's a, I wrote this book. It's a Western book. When I told my wife and my son, they couldn't believe it. But dad is smart. <laughs> Men, after 45, the number goes down who will get saved. 45, 65. The older a man gets, the less likely he's to be saved. So I was reading Barner's research about souls and postmodern America, and you know what I found out? That age group, their favorite genre or genre is Westerns. So I said, I'm going to write a book to get that crowd saved. Even if I got to pull a gun to get them to the altar, I'm doing it. And so I wrote this book entitled The Trail to Nowhere. And one man read it and bought 300 copies for his staff and associates. He said, Brother Shuttlesworth, I never saw this coming. I said, talk to my wife and son. They didn't see it either. But I said, I believe God told me to write this. How many have an unsaved husband or father or brother or son? Let me see your hand. This is a great witnessing tool. Are you hearing me? People have already responded since it's gone out. And we're going to probably have to reprint some more. But uh, it's entitled, The Trail to Nowhere. And I'll tell you the main plot. 
Well, no, get the book. Amen. I think Bishop needs this. He looks like he needs a horse. Amen. Some of our other books on ministering in the spirit are available as well. I've written two volumes, working on a third on the gifts of the spirit. I have a lot of people say, how in the world do you know that? How, how do you know these things? Why are we seeing these miracles? Well, I first started putting this together for my son and family that I want to make sure they know what dad did for 50 years. But then I said, you know, I'm going to bless everybody. So the first volume is entitled, The Camels Are Coming, speaking from typology of the coming of the gifts of the Spirit. It takes the gifts to get the church out of the world, and it takes the gifts to bring the church to heaven. Through Abraham, Isaac, and Rebecca, we have the story, Eliezer being the servant, the Holy Ghost. And I break it down so you have an understand how each gift works and when you need to operate in what gift and when. Very important. And then the second one I just released is entitled Good, Better, Best. It's on the gift of faith. And the gift of faith is the only one of the nine gifts that work for you personally. All the other eight work through you to bless others. Are you listening? And so the Bible says that gift, is released in times of crisis, and it brings supernatural peace and victory, the gift of faith. And so uh, we finish this. I tell some of the stories of the preachers I've worked with, Brother Sumrall, Brother Shambach, Mark Buntain, so many. You'll love this because it's more based on the experience of other men of God and how God used them. I talk about Wigglesworth, Howard Carter, and so... They told me, because as you know, you're never really in charge. You may think you're in charge, but I'm not. But they told me they're giving everybody a special on this. So you can get both of those books on the wonderful gifts of the Spirit. Where'd my wife go? She keeps leaving. Was it something I said? I don't, the only reason I want to know, how much did she say? 40? You can get both for 40. That's 20% off. Amen. And I want to bless Brian Wright with these. Speaking of coming back from missions, they told me you were in the Philippines. Is that right? Amen. And uh, I bless these to you in Jesus' name for a supernatural operation to come in your ministry there, not only in uh, the United States, but the nations of the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, son. If you have your Bible, thank you now, Brother Adams. How many enjoy these wonderful musicians? I don't take them for granted. In fact, here's a peace offering for Janice, ministering to those oppressed of the devil, but tell her not her. Amen. That's his wife. Brad Strobel, he's like our second son. And, of course, Chris Hardy, who I've never met before, don't know who he is. No, we love Brother Chris. You enjoy coming out, Brother Chris? It blesses you. Amen. I love him. If you have your Bible, I'm not going to be long because I want to pray for people tonight. Mark chapter 5. Mark the fifth chapter. give you a moment to turn there or bring your device on to it. I was in a meeting the first time people started using cell phones for their Bibles. I thought, this is the rudest church I've ever been in. (laughs) Either that or I'm the boringest preacher I've ever met. They all whipped out these phones. So jokingly, I said, if that's Jesus, tell him I said hello. Otherwise, shut it off. And then the pastor said, they have a, a Bible app. Now, Brother Shuttlesworth, and I'm glad they did. (laughs) Father, before we go into the word, I know you have many millions now watching around the world. I thank you for that awesome privilege 
to preach your gospel to people that aren't here. Last night on Facebook, thousands tuned in. And I'm believing God tonight that these that have come will not leave without a touch. Some have come every night and say, I'm releasing my faith, Lord. Honor their faith. These that are here for the first time tonight, let this be a night of blessing for them too. Don't let anybody leave here disappointed. But let us leave singing, I got just what I wanted from the Lord. Honor your word. Take your servant and hide me behind that cross, Lord, that the people will only see and hear Jesus tonight. And everybody you believe it, say amen. amen. Mark chapter 5, and I want to begin reading, if I may. Well, drop down. I'm going to read more than that. I'm going to start with the first verse. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. When he, that's Jesus, was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been, King James says plucked, but it means literally torn apart. Chains were actually broken. Plucked asunder. And the Bible says the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus... Far off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. These devils are talking now. There was nigh under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. So all the devils besought him, that's Jesus, saying, Send us into the swine. This is the first case of deviled ham. <laughs> that we may enter into them. Forthwith Jesus gave them leave. The unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. That dropped down to the verse after the one that follows that. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they 
were afraid. When the power of God is manifested, it brings a fear of God. The word fear here means reverential awe. When the gifts of the Spirit are operating, suddenly we're made aware that the invisible God has showed up and he is working by his power. I've said this for years. We don't need less of God. We need more of God, more of his power, more of his glory, more of his supernatural help. We need more of God. If you believe that, lift your hand and say, Lord, that's my prayer. I need more of God. Oh, hallelujah. Years ago, when I first started in the ministry, I was about 20 years of age. And I went to preach in this little church. And when I was done, I invited the people that wanted prayer to come. And a young man that they'd brought from a mental institution broke free from his restraints, which I did not see. My wife and I weren't married, but she had brought her friend, who was a Catholic. So it's the first time her friend was in a Holy Ghost meeting. The young boy ran across the back of the church. I saw him running. Came down the side, ran towards me, jumped on me, locked his legs around me, and started licking my neck. Any anointing I had lifted. <laughs> he started using unclean language. And here I am, 20 years of age. It dawned on me, he might have a devil. <laughs> I put my hand between his body, where he was trying to kiss my neck and lick it, and I threw him as hard as I could. When I did, he went about 10 feet through the air. You'd be surprised how strong you'll get, gentlemen, when a man starts licking your neck. <laughs> he hit the wall and slumped down. And the pastor come over to me. He said, Brother Ted, Brother Ted. He said, we don't beat up devils. We cast them out. I said, Brother Lundstrom, I don't care if he goes to hell. Any compassion I had ended when he tried to kiss me on the lips and on my neck. Every part of me that was a hillbilly rose up strong. And I laid him out. I don't know where he went. Never saw him again. I must have taken 25 showers when I got home. But you know what I realized? I was not prepared to cast out devils. There was no class on it in Bible school. We didn't have cast the devil out 101. I had to learn these things as the Lord taught me how to minister to people that needed delivered. But the good thing was God had mercy on me. So from there, I went up to the state of Maine, way up. Auburn Lewiston. And I rented a tent from a preacher. 
And I put it up in Auburn. And a lady come up to me. She said, I've been waiting for you to come. I said, you don't even know who I am. Oh, she said, I've heard of you. Which I was excited about because this is only like my third meeting in my life. But it turned out my wife's mother knew the woman and told her. The woman was a counselor. Not a Christian. But she had a woman that heard voices. And when she told my wife's mother that, my mother-in-law, she believed in me. She said, get her out to the tent. I would have been glad to have a heads up, but no one gave me one. <laughs> and I was standing like this preaching, and from outside the tent, here comes this woman. And I said, uh-oh, I know that look again. She not jumping on me and licking my neck. So I set myself. I'm ready. Then she stopped and started growling. And all them dear New England folks looked. I knew I couldn't preach that night until I dealt with that lady. Now, everything I just told you, I didn't know. But I come off the platform, went right up the center aisle, and she said, he said, don't come here. I'm looking around for a man. I see no man. So I knew something was wrong with her. I said, who told you? And she said this name, Kish. I said, who's Kish? She said, the dog's standing right here. I looked. I almost said, here, Kish. <laughs> but there was no dog. And this was back in that summer when there was a murderer in New York City called the Son of Sam Killer. And he said, a dog told him to kill them people. My mind immediately hooked into that thought. I said, this must be the son of Sam's sister. <laughs> Samina. <laughs> and I looked at her. I took a stance like every preacher I ever saw. <laughs> and I said, come out of her. And the devil said, no. All right, I'm not going to argue. Go on. <laughs> nah, I stayed right with it. And within about 10 minutes, the Lord helped us to cast the devil out of that woman. And her counselor that brought her, his name was Ellen, she come up out of the dark. She was outside, saw what was going on. And she said, I'm Ellen your mother-in-law's friend. This is the patient that I told you I was going to bring. Brought the woman to the front row, put her next to some strong Pentecostal preachers. They all moved down a couple seats. <laughs> and I preached on the power of Jesus Christ. And that precious woman came to the altar crying. And I laid hands on her and led her into a prayer of salvation. And as far as I know, that was the moment God filled her with the Holy Ghost and she began to speak with other tongues. It's one thing to cast out the unclean spirit, but if you don't fill that house that unclean spirit's going to go find seven other devils and come back and try to take back what you cast him out of. It's important to be filled with the Spirit of God. We're living in a day people take church lightly, and they don't seem to understand why we do what we do. 
But I come tonight to tell you we need to draw nigh unto God like this time never before. We need to have a reverential awe because God's going to give people back their right mind. They're going to be sitting. They're going to be clothed. They're going to be delivered. Some of them are your loved ones. I didn't come to tell you there's no hope. I came to tell you that God's going to make a way where there is no way for your children, for your grandchildren, for your family, for your mama, your dad, your brother, your sister. Jesus Christ is on the move. Everybody shout, Christ is on the move. And he is the same yesterday and today and forever. Thank God. That woman went home. And this was her story the next morning. She called and told Ellen, who called and told me. When I got out of my car to go up to my apartment, that dog, Kish, was there and said, I told you not to go under that tent. Now, I can't talk with you anymore and disappeared right there on the stoop of her apartment. I'm talking about when Jesus casts out the devil even the devil knows his days are numbered. Are you listening to me? The Bible says Satan has come down from heaven in this last hour knowing that his time is short. The wrath of that devil has come upon the earth, but God had a remedy, and the remedy is you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to pull down every stronghold. We're going to destroy every work of the devil. Some of you have given up on America. You don't think America's going to make it. I come to tell you tonight, I saw it in the spirit. One more visitation is coming from heaven to this nation. But God's going to pull down every stronghold through the authority of every believer that will use the word of God to cast the devil out. Raise your hands and praise God. Somebody shout, the devil's going out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pew, glory. Man, I feel the anointing on me. Lift your hand a minute. Glory, glory, glory. Pew. Hallelujah. January of 2022, I went to Dallas, Texas to preach, and the meeting went on for many nights. On a Thursday night, January, I believe it was 17th, Central Time, 9.03. I was standing, preaching. We had about 800 people that night. It was a great move of the Spirit. The meat was growing. If we stayed here and kept preaching, this would grow. Because the Word of God, it magnifies the Lord and it builds people up. Can you say amen? That's why they call it the work of the ministry. you got to work at you young preachers. I don't preach to those that aren't here. I'm preaching to you that are here. <laughs> Ooh, I had to learn that too. When suddenly I was caught up at the top of that church, but it was like dark. I lost sight of the people. I've only had maybe five times in my whole life, 40-some, 50 years, five times a supernatural thing happened to me. I'm wondering what in the world. I don't remember what I'm saying. I just see stuff. Then I saw this tall, dark, evil-looking creature. Tall, dark, fierce. And I heard a voice. And the voice said, This is the strong man that has been sitting over America. But this night, I am pulling him down. When I heard that, I saw a ball of fire come out above the head of that tall creature and burned it right down till it was gone. I saw it. 
And when I looked where the creature stood, I saw the U.S. Capitol building. Then I heard the voice again. The strong man over the nation is now pulled down. And then I got caught up again. It was as if I went across the top roof of the church. I can't explain it. And I started prophesying. I saw these flashing lights. And I said, Lord, what is that? And I heard the voice again. In the city that people think that I'm least likely to move in. I'm sending revival. And then the lights were flashing. It cleared up in my vision. And I saw the word Las Vegas. Saw it just as sure as I'm looking at you right now. And I heard the word of the Lord. When I come out of it, here's the crowd again. And I'm pointing. And I'm pointing to a young man and his wife prophesying about Las Vegas. After the service, his father come up. He said, Brother Shuttlesworth, you don't know this, but my son and his wife are headed in the morning to start a church in Las Vegas. And here I'm standing right in front of them prophesying, not even knowing who they were. Knew the father. Didn't know the son that had gotten bigger or the married woman that it was his wife. And this week, while I've been here, My nephew and another preacher rented the casino where they filmed the movie Casino. Never been done since Catherine Kuhlman in the 70s. And had a revival with 2,000 people registered and packed out that casino right there on the strip in Las Vegas. People were saved. People were healed. People were delivered. What I'm trying to tell you, it doesn't matter whether you get to do it. I didn't know if I was going to be there or not, or maybe someday I will. But what I'm telling you, and when God begins to pull down the devil that's against you, the devil that's trying to take you out, he may use a man, may use a woman, may use somebody to encourage you. But if God has said it, he will bring it to pass. If God has spoken it, it shall come to pass. Hold on to the hand of God. God, he'll lift you above the struggle. He'll lift you above the storm. He'll lift you above the accusation. He'll lift you above the lying devils that are trying to take you out. It's time to cast the devil out and receive the right mind. God has prepared for you. You're battling in your mind. You're wondering what's going on, but there is a God in heaven who has already dictated that the devil is going to be destroyed in the end of time. But the church of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be raised up in the latter day and the latter house will be greater than the former house. Raise your hand and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring me this chair, Brother Donnie, please. Let's lift our hands. I'm getting ready to pray. I feel the break. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, sir. God bless Donnie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you that don't remember, in January 2022, the CDC said, we're going to lock America down for another year. But the next morning, after that vision God gave me, they backed off of it. And removed all the mandates by March of that year. You can't tell me the devil wasn't behind what went on in 2020. It had every touch of that foul devil to it. It smelt like the devil. It felt like the devil. People got in fear. That's not God. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. If you're going to have fear, have the kind they had. Reverential fear. Oh, look what the Lord's done. What chains couldn't do. What the cutting of the stones could not do. What being shut away in the mountains and in the tombs night and day. What that could not accomplish. There is a God. He sent Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Jesus comes, the temptation 
tempter's power is always broken. I want to encourage you tonight. This is going to be the best year you've ever had. I don't care what the news is saying. I don't care what politicians are saying. I don't care the threatenings of the wicked one. I bind the devil over your family now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to be free. I command your family be free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Free. Everybody shout free. 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 Woo. Glory to God. Jesus breaks every fetter, every shackle, every chain. As an addition to this, before I pray, the Jewish tradition believed if you had problems and cut the skin, the spirits could go out through the cuts. What he was trying to do was get rid of those devils by a religious tradition that was not working. Did you know they used lancets and bleeding up until 1960-something and 60 in this nation? And they called them humors. I've seen the doctor's charts. It's a human body with circles. This part does this. And even with advanced medical science, they were still cutting people, even in this country, in the 60s. Are you listening to me? Someone said, well, they didn't cut me. It's like the old boy said he went in and they pulled the lancet out. He pulled his switchblade out. He said, you go first. I'll go next. (laughs) What I'm trying to say in a nice way is man's methods may not work. But God's method always works. Always works. Always works. Always works. works. Jesus, we love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then last year as we came into 2023, the Lord told me, he said, now regional devils will be pulled down. He pulled down the stronghold over the nation. But he said, now certain regions, will you'll see activity. We've seen that last year. I could take you city by city, shootings, problems. But that was a regional devil. But you know what? When they told me about Atlanta, I said, I'm going down and deal with that devil. And of all things, the mayor invited me to come. Murder, killings, the high crime rate. Are you hearing me, brother? Huffton got in an agreement with me. We took the tent down, and in six days, all the numbers changed. An LGBTQ, RSV, UXY group was scheduled to march in Atlanta the week I had the tent. They had just been in Washington, D.C., shut the whole city down with that parade. The mayor heard they were coming in Atlanta. He went away somewhere. We don't know where he went. He invited me to come, then I never saw him again. The governor, I'll, t- I'll say it right on TV. His name was Kemp. He disappeared. And, they let, and both of them said, we're so glad you're here, Brother Shuttlesworth. We're right behind you. They were so far behind me, I never saw him again. <laughs> and I say this publicly, Garland Hunt a lawyer that went to Harvard that worked with the governor and the mayor, he came and sat with me every night. Wellington Boone, different wonderful men of God. And God used that meeting. And on the first day of the planned LGBTQ view, it was canceled. Nobody showed up. I believe so strongly that the church can pull down these strongholds in the name of the Lord Jesus. That tonight I'm going to pray a blessing over you. No devil's going to come through the bloodline. We're going to get you set up under the blood on this last night that I'm with you. And I believe you're going to receive divine protection. I believe you're going to see supernatural safety. I believe angels of God are going to watch over you. In the name of Jesus. Why God ever pick 
me to do this work. I have no idea. I was headed to West Point. Congressman, I had to approve the whole nine yards. And God said, you're going to be a preacher. I felt like saying, get thee behind me, saying. <laughs> My dad was a preacher. But if God puts his hand on you, the only thing you will ever succeed in is what he's called you to do. Your success is in following the word of God. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. Follow the word. Here I am, 20-some years of age, and I go to Jamaica to hold an outdoor crusade. I'm not even married. I haven't been kissed yet. I'm waiting. I tried. But you know what Sister Bonnie would say? I got to pray about it. I said, you better hit your knees quick, girl. Amen. (laughs) Even the night I asked her, I took her to a park. There was a little stream flowing, a little wooden bridge, squirrels in the trees. Beautiful. I said, will you marry me? I'm I'm on my knees like an idiot. (coughs) She said, I'll pray about it. Thank God I got a praying wife. So I'm there in Jamaica, just a young fella, about 21 years of age now. And suddenly God brings multiplied hundreds and hundreds to fill the whole field. They were up in a tree. They were on the wall. They were across the street, sitting on top of a bus stop. I still see the words on the side, drink red stripe beer. Don't do that. I'm just saying that was what it was. Only the Jamaican folk know what that means. Isn't that right? You can run that mountain. Hold on, mountain. And God began to move. When one night, everybody's singing and shouting. When his bleeding hands touch mine. When his bleeding hands touch mine. Jesus set me free through all eternity. When his wounded hands touch mine. And here comes a witch doctor through the crowd. I never heard of this group. They're called Pocomenians. Similar to Church of God, but a little different. Here he comes. But very close to another group that I don't want to say. And here he comes. It's okay, it's Friday night. You can laugh tonight. You can shout tonight. Because tonight is your night. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) He's got a sheet wrapped around his little skinny waist. He's got a stick with bones on it, with strings, shaking it. He's looking like a Rasta, only his hair is even worse than Rasta's. And I'm up on the platform. They built it 10 feet off the ground so the people could see all over the field. And something in me got angry. I dealt with the guy that licked my neck. I dealt with the woman in Kish. And now I've had it. No more disturbance. I jumped off the platform not realizing how high I was. When I landed, I lost my balance, and when I stood up, there he was right in front of my face. Bad breath and all, there he was. I didn't lay hands on him. All I said was, I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Loose the man. And not only did he get loosed, his sheet got loosed, he dropped his stick and lost the bones. And he left naked. But he wasn't clothed and sitting in his right mind. I said to Brother Douglas, the sponsoring pastor, he said, well, that's a group, Pocomenianism. Some of you may know what it is, a Pocomenian. And he said, he's like the witch doctor. But I got mad again. Because when he walked in, everybody was singing, When his 
wounded hands touch mine. But when he come in, everybody stopped singing. That devil stole the song right out of the people's mouth. Now I'm mad a second time. I get back up. I said, I don't care who you are. I'm telling you, you just let the devil steal your praise because he intimidated you by the appearance of that man. And that, friends, was when I was 21. And since that time, I've always tried to teach people, don't let anything stop you from praising God. If the devil tells you don't clap your hands, I'd clap them all the more. If the devil says don't shout, I'd shout all the louder. If the devil says don't jump on your feet and dance before the Lord, I'd cut a rug. Hallelujah. Whatever the devil tells you not to do, go ahead and do it anyhow. Because we're not here to allow the enemy of our soul to mess us up. We've come for one purpose, and that is to lift up the name and the power of Jesus Christ. He's here right now. You ought to shout because I'm telling you, in America, there is a visitation of God that is casting the devil out region by region. And by the end of this year, I'm believing for a full-blown Holy Ghost revival to sweep this nation. I'm not preaching revivals coming. I'm telling you, revival is already here in the name of Jesus Christ, raise your hands and shout, hallelujah. Shout, revival is here. Shout, revival is here. Then lift both your hands to heaven, hallelujah. Begin to praise him, praise him, praise him. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I feel victory here. Oh, somebody say, victory is mine. Say, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is. Go ahead, singers. Well, victory, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is Begin mine. to worship the Lord. I told Satan, get thee behind get me. Thee behind. Victory today is mine. Well, victory, victory is, is mine. mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Well, victory today is mine. Well, I woke up this morning, didn't have a doubt. Knew the Lord would bring me out. Well, I fell on my knees and said, Lord, help me, please. Got up on my feet. Well, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Sing the verse again. Well, I woke up this morning, never had a doubt. Well, I woke up this morning, didn't have a doubt, knew that God would be out. I fell 
on my knees. Won't you help me, please? Got up on my feet and victory. All right, come on, sing. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Well, victory today. Mine, mine, mine. Get thee behind. Well, Victory today is mine. Oh, 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 I told Saint, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Well, victory is mine now. Victory is mine. Begin to praise the Lord for victory. Maybe it's a financial victory. Physical, family, to stop a lying tongue. Thank God you got the victory over. Happiness is mine. Happiness is mine. Real happiness. Happiness today is mine. Real joy is mine. Joy is mine. Well, joy today is mine. Yeah, I told Satan, get thee behind. Joy today is mine. Well, joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. Oh, yes. I told Satan, get thee behind. Joy today is mine. Whoa. Up this morning, Never didn't have a doubt. doubt. Knew the Lord would bring, bring me out. I fell on my knees and Lord, won't you help me, please? Got up oh, 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 victory is mine. I may have that victory tonight. Is mine. Get it in your spirit. Today you're not going mine. back, you're going forward. I told Satan, get thee behind. Well, your hands, play it. Joy today is mine. Well, joy is mine. No joy is mine. Joy today. Today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. For joy today is mine. Well, joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. Yes, it is. I feel like the Lord just spoke to me. It may be more than one woman, but there's a woman here. You've been battling in your mind. Almost like a heaviness will come on you. It's hard. Sometimes they even go through the day. You say, Brother Shuttlesworth, I believe tonight God will set me free from this thing attacking my mind. Who is that tonight? You're dealing something like that. Whoever it is, just come down here right now. I'm going to pray for you. As I said, it may, it may be more than one, but I know there is one. Here she comes. Bless your heart. Anyone else? Bring her down, Don. She's moving slow. Here's one on this side. Thank you, Don. Anyone else? Bring the keys down a little, son. Everybody stretch your hand towards these people. You ladies, look at me. 
Which one of you was standing at your sink and you felt a heaviness come on you while you were standing there? That happened to you. I'm going to pray for you first. You're the one I saw in the vision. You even have a hard time looking at knives as you're cleaning them. That's a spirit of suicide trying to take you out. It was so important to God, he revealed it to me in a vision about two minutes ago. Lift your hands. I'm going to cast it off of you. You're not possessed, but you are being tormented. What happened was you had people that got mad at you. They told you they were going to try to put some kind of a spell or something on you. And you have been dealing with that. This goes back, clear back even to a boyfriend situation years ago. They didn't like you being with that particular man. I break that off of you in the name of Jesus, the head of the church. You foul spirit that's attacked her mind. I command you in Christ's name, loose the woman and come out of her now in the name of the Lord. Someone say, the visions are real. Which one of you ladies is taking a particular medication or have in the past to help you? Have you had to take any medication just to... Huh? Huh? I didn't say for your mind. I said a medication. Any med have you taken any medication lately? No. Come here. Bless your heart. Some things I don't say over the mic. That's why I pulled it away. But you're going to be all right. I'll tell you in a minute what I saw, okay? Everybody lift your hand. You've struggled with your salvation. Sometimes you feel like you're doing good. Other times, oh, I failed God. Why did I do that? You go back and forth. Isn't that right? Every time you do it, it seems like the condemnation lasts longer. Oh, I can't believe I did that again. I'm going to set you free from that condemning spirit. The Lord will give you victory tonight. Have you ever been filled with the Holy Ghost? When I lay hands on you, the Spirit will come up in your spirit, woman. And you'll begin to speak and prophesy in tongues. And the whole thing will lift. Amen. Even this feeling that comes on your arms. You don't, can't even explain it. It's not pain, but it's like a shivering feeling. Right? In the mighty name of Jesus, you foul spirit of condemnation. Go off the girl. God, fill her with the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord. Lift your hands and praise God. I saved the best for last. There's a reaction you're having to that particular medication. And it affects you. You need to go back to your doctor, get checked again. I'm not opposed, as I said the other night, I'm not opposed to doctors or nurses. It's a noble profession. But how many know sometimes your prescription or what you're using might not be the best for you? And so you can get it checked. Now me... I don't use anything. I don't even use aspirin. Now, I had, a, I had a fever once for three days in 1977. That was it. Perfect attendance in school, college. You know why I had the fever? Because I got mad at a preacher that stole my offering. God didn't let me get away with that. <laughs> State the mic. God didn't let me get away with that. He said, You got to forgive it. Part of healing is walking in love. You're, I'm telling on myself, but I don't care. I'm almost 70. What do I care? I learned these things. Now you can learn them. Save you from a fever. When the health director in our county asked me how I was doing, his name was Lloyd, Lloyd White, lovely man. I said, well, I had a little fever in February. This was in 2020. Oh, you should have called. I said, no. That was in 1977. I didn't know you then, Lloyd. Amen. That's it. And then when I hurt my knee that time, I tell everybody, my wife pushed me down the stairs, but I'm healed now. Amen. I fell and busted my knee one time. That's it. You don't have to go through life suffering. And I didn't want to say over the mic, that's why I pulled away from it. I knew what was causing a little bit of this. Some people react differently to one thing than another. That's all. You can see she's a nice lady. 
But when I lay hands on you, God needs to balance everything out and cause you to have victory in your mind. Also, those that should be supportive of you, as, to, as soon as you started getting drawn closer to the Lord, somebody had like what I call a mocking spirit try to make you feel like you something wrong with you. There ain't nothing wrong with you. It's wrong with them. They need the Lord to touch them. So it's a combination, but I, I saw it and I wanted you to know so you can be fully free when you leave here tonight. Is that all right? All right, lift your hands to Jesus. Here's a young girl, Lord, a young lady that you're going to set her free. Also, your body, I don't know what caused it, there was a little twist to your body, and the Lord's going to straighten you up, your skeleton section, so to speak. You're going to be made whole. Little pains that come in different parts of your body. You're too young for that mess. I don't care if you're 100, you're too young. Because the Bible says, I've been young, now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. You're going to do great things. I feel it coming. You have some kind of a plan. I don't know where you put it. But you've been thinking, what would I do if I... And you have thoughts. You're smart. I used to have them when I was younger. Amen. But God's going to even bless the work of your hands. Are you ready? I call this the spirit of encouragement from the Lord. You feel it, don't you? Jesus, touch the woman. Right through her body, right down through her legs. Straighten her whole skeleton. Especially in the waist, the bones command her to be free. Someone say, I'm free. Say, I am free. There's a lady over here. You look very nice tonight. I always get it wrong. It's either a jaguar skin or a leopard. Can a leopard change his spots? I don't know. But come here, sister. The anointing's on you. Everybody lift your hands. In a minute, I'm going to pray for everybody. God bless you. You glad you came? glad you're here. Jesus is here. At some point, you've had, I don't want to say fear, but you've had to deal with people that would try to come against you. In that, you just kept moving, so to speak, <laughs> because of threats. You understand what I'm saying? In fact, one person, a little taller than you, but it's a man threatens you, try to make you afraid. And the Lord is breaking that attack off. You'll hear shortly that he's going to prison. You hear what I'm saying? Now you knew he was messing with drugs a little bit. And if you didn't, you're finding out right now. But God's breaking it off. In Jesus' name. And you're not going to be caught up in all that mess. God's going to spare you from what's about to happen. Amen. Someone say, God will do it. Because she's a nice person. Yes. But more than that, God is giving her favor right now. Lift your hands. The power of God's coming on the people. Some people you don't need to be hooked up with. Be careful who you associate with, even in churches. My wife says it this way. We're not going to go preach where there's a shaky platform. So as a result, there's a lot of places I can't go. Amen. That's a good woman. She's found what she needed. Come here, sir. The power of God's on you. Yes. Yes, sir. Please, please. Are you his wife, friend? Come with him. What God's put together, let no man put asunder. I don't even know what asunder is, but don't let it happen. Are you from this area? Where are you from? Oh, up in Canada. I love Montreal. I have a niece that has a husband. that They have a church up there. Do you know Stefan Giswaldi and my... That's your church. Oh, wonderful. Well, you can go back and tell Steve I'm still saved and that we're believing for him. Amen. 
Lift your hands first. It was you the Lord showed me this. There's been a hindering spirit that's tried to buffet you from a financial breakthrough. You have these ideas. You know to do these things. But this spirit's not just against you. It's come against the whole nation in Canada. So let's pull it down off the whole nation tonight. You feel like I can't give in in this area, but I know I can do this. But there are external pressures that are keeping you from prospering. You understand what I'm saying? Come as close as you can. Where's my ushers? Help this lady up while I pray for these two folks. He'll help you up, honey. He won't hurt you. Praise God. Ho! Oh, hallelujah. The glory. Now look at me. God's given you an idea. I don't know if you've typed it out or written a plan, but I know in your mind you think, if I do this, then I can do this. And you've got a plan in your spirit. Yes. But right now there's some kind of laws or something that's external. Isn't that right? Yes. That won't let you operate to prosper. True? True. You know, I'm the one that's been praying, Justin Trudeau shall be saved. I haven't given up on him. I thought he was Joel Osteen until I found out later he's Justin Trudeau. Boy, they look alike. Amen. Everybody stretch your hand this way. I'm getting just, we're just about there. But there, these are regional spirits I'm breaking off. Now, Father, this spirit that is anti-prosperity, it comes and is birthed out of hell. It's communism, socialism. I pull that spirit down off Montreal tonight. Even if you got to raise the mafia back up in Montreal, do it, Lord. But there will not be these demons robbing people of their prosperity. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Hallelujah. Someone said, you just prayed God raised the mafia back up. Yeah, then save him when he gets him back. I need to pray one more prayer for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nice lady. I don't know these folks. They'll tell you. I mean, I know who the, where they're from, but I don't know them. Look at me. This night, God's healing your body. You've carried this thing long enough, declares the Lord. Give it to me. All right? Just give it to Jesus. Look at me. You're not going to have any kind of muscular disease or deterioration in your nerves. For that is what they are trying to tell you. You're beginning to have problems. And it's even affected. Isn't that right? <laughs> Come out, you unclean devil. There you go. You're healed. Go ahead and praise him, little sister. Let it go down, Donnie. Stop looking at his wife. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Praise him. Tall young man here. Nice tie. Beautiful brown coat. Come here, sir, please. Come over on this side. Lift your hands. I looked back and I saw the anointing over your head. If you're not already, you're headed to becoming what I would call a minister called of God. God's going to use you in a mighty way in the days ahead. You believe that with me? You've pressed in, but it's like you've come up against a wall right now. And you're not able to get the full breakthrough you've been believing for. And you've asked the Lord, how long? Isn't that right? Yes, sir. When God told me to go on television, it was 1990. I had my tent up in Sarasota on the fairgrounds. But I didn't get on TV till 1999. Those were long years to wait, nine years. But it came to pass. Last week, my TV guy told me we had over 300 million homes worldwide that watched the telecast. That's God. And I give him all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. But when you're waiting, you wonder. But remember this. I tell this to every young 
Man, I feel the call of God on preparation time is never wasted time. Just make sure you don't become a pain in the butt to those that are already flowing in their call. Temptation is, here's how I'd do it. Who really cares? Or you'd already been doing it. Amen. Hey, I tell it like it is. Last I checked, you're going to tell the truth to go to heaven. So I tried to tell the truth. Amen. Be a blessing. You are. But I know how the enemy works. And he would try to get you upset. Why is it taking so long? Don't worry about it. Get you a cheeseburger. <laughs> Eat it. Smile at people. And just know God's hands on your life. Now, you believe it's done? Sir, you believe it's done? I pulled the spirit off the nation of Canada. Go back and testify to the whole church. Businesses will begin to take off again. China is trying to build a big factory somewhere near where you live. I see it in my spirit. Somewhere near Montreal, they're trying to build some kind of a factory. It has to do with medicine. It will be shut down by the power of God. And it will not be dispersed to hurt the people. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. So get you a cheeseburger. Enjoy life. Be happy about it. Amen. When you were born, there was a little bit of a condition in your body. Not major, but if you talk to your mom or dad, they'd tell you the doctors were a little concerned. You pretty much have grown out of it. But now I release the anointing to strengthen your hip bones and your back. Pour strength in them because you're getting ready to run for the Lord. So you're going to need your full capacity. Glory. Full capacity. Someone say full capacity. Spirit's moving over here. Everybody lift your hands in the far section. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Donnie, there's a lady with a brown coat, a white blouse or, or whatever. There she is. She's looking around, but you're right next to her, Don. She can reach out and slap you. That makes a good slogan for AT&T. Reach out and slap somebody. Amen. Huh? Whose wife? Oh, I just prayed for your husband? Come on back. You're allowed. I'm still going to say what the Lord showed me. I just didn't know you were related. You know, that happened to me and my wife. She was sitting in one place. I was sitting in another. And Morris Sorella called me out, did some kind of a thing, like a circle on my head, laid hand. Boom, I went down. Then he walked clear across the auditorium, and we didn't know him. Pulled my wife up, drew a circle, laid hands, say good night, everybody, and left. But both she and I had been poisoned at a restaurant. And God healed both of us that night in Dallas, Texas. Huh? That area. What area? Fort Worth. Oh, yeah. But I harbor nothing against Dallas. Take. You have any children? You ready? It's going to take a miracle. You need a touch. I don't know if you're aware of that, but I was when I looked over. Lift your hand. Father, recreate. There'll be no complications at birth. They shall bear children. Mostly her. He'll watch. Somebody say, yes, Lord. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more people. I, I saw the way I see it, it's like a, a light over people's heads. Then I pray. And that's how I've done it for years. There's a lovely lady in the second row. She has a check top, black and white checked. And I want her to come, please. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, Thank you, Lord. Help this lady up. What's your name? Can I can I ask you what your name is? Brittany beautiful name. How long have you been married? More than a year yet? A year and four months. That's beautiful. And uh, the Lord has touched you tonight. You'll have no problem in childbearing. 
and I'm glad. Amen. God bless you. Is this your first night? Well, I'm glad you've been coming then. How long have you been living down here in this part of our nation? More than a year? Yes, sir. Where did you come from? I've been here 20 plus years. Oh, 20 plus. Well, you're a Floridian. But you didn't you didn't come from here originally. And what I saw was a plane flying when I looked at you. And you came down according to what you just said 20 years ago. I didn't know how long. But I knew you came here from somewhere else. Doesn't mean you came by plane. I just saw a plane. So I knew it meant you traveled here. I don't always interpret things literally, but I saw that. There's properties that your family deserves that somehow got tied up some time back. I don't know if it's your daddy and mommy or who it is, but it belongs to them and it belongs to you. But it's going to take your faith to break something that has been forgotten about now for years. But the Lord's going to somehow resurrect the legal right of that which belongs to your family. You believe that with me? Is your mommy or daddy still alive? Uh, I feel this more the mother than your dad, but I pray for your mom to have full freedom in her joints and in her bones. And you tell her, even in the back of her neck now, right? Do you know about that? Where she's getting stiff neck and her shoulder is bothering her? Did she tell you that? You call her. Tell her the preacher's going to pray. Glory. I hear this uh, name like Daisy or something like that. It's a woman, but she's like a like a country person. But your family has two roots, one in the south, one up north. And the woman I'm seeing is somehow related to your mother. Did you? Well, you know that, right? Now I do too. Hallelujah. The Lord's going to move on your mother's side of the family. And problems that went back to her mother and to her that are trying to come on you. You're a young person, but it's not going to work. You saw me say the back of the neck. You started feeling a tightness in your body. Isn't that right? And it's similar. You call your mom, like I said. And now, one of your shoulders, you're starting to feel a difficulty. True? Yeah. But now, even though you're a young person, it's trying to get down in your legs. And one of your hips and knees needs a touch tonight. I'm going to pray. I forget the name of it. It's a nerve that if a disc press against it, sciatica, is everything on That's what the devil's trying to put on you. So sometimes that sharp pain, see what it means? The Lord's going to touch your uh, vertebrae in the lower part of your back. I command no arthritis to set up in your body. I also ask the Lord to restore your sense of smell so that you breathe freely and perfectly. Amen? Everybody lift your hand. The anointing's on her. This is healing, but she's getting it right now. No arthritis, bone trouble. Loose the woman, you devil. Loose her now in the name of Jesus. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. The second woman is a young girl with a gray top on. Braided hair. She knows who it is. She already, you watch, she'll tell you, I knew he was going to call me. You probably are going to tell everybody, I knew he was going to call me. I did. Because you see, it, it's, it bears witness one with the other. Stretch your hand. We're just about. Glory. I said glory. You're just a young person, but you have greatness on the inside of you, as all of us do that love the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
There's an infection that tried to get in your teeth, in your gum. Listen to what I'm telling you. I don't need your help. If I did, I'll ask you. And that infection has spread. I'll tell you why I tell people that. The revelation obligates God to do it. But if you want to interrupt, help yourself. But you're going to have to heal yourself. And that's how the gifts work. This infection has spread. And not just your ear, but also right here in your head. Like you feel something that comes on you, right? But it's this side. All right, take a step of faith. That means you're receiving. I'll ask Brother Donnie to hold the microphone. Doesn't Donnie look nice tonight? I must be paying him too much. Put your knees right, or hands on my knees. Look at me. I command this infection to dissolve and go out of your body. In the name of Jesus. Where your ear was sore to the touch. Right? Watch. You spirit of infirmity that came through the infection. Come. Oh. Amen. What? I can hear. Like, I had an ear infection, and I feel like I just feel like... Let's go. Touch it all you want. It's not sore now. I just cast what I call the spirit of infirmity out. Glory. Someone say glory. Glory. This is a good way to end Friday night. Shouting, praising the Lord. I've been starting over here. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to start with this crowd and come across. Ushers, do not let them go out in the hallway and come around. Stay in the anointing. I'm in no hurry. If you got to go once you're prayed for. Now, Sunday, my son's going to have a powerful message. We're coming right back here Sunday morning at 11. And I look forward to seeing every one of you. Amen. Brother Ben, Kevin, just start the people coming. Donnie, bring them down around like a hook, like we're going fishing. Bring me my grandson. He needs a touch. Asa, I pray for you right now. Glad for grandchildren. Oh, oh, there's Amen. He was wrestling with grandfather today. I lost every one. The ushers will help you. to the max tonight. How many believe that God will give my son a bigger auditorium? Well, God just answered your prayer. He's already got it. Amen. They're just finishing it. That was a quick answer. Someone say, why do we need a bigger auditorium? Because we got too many people and not enough prayer room. Then what we'll do, we'll, this people will move to this center aisle when we're ready. Everybody lift your hands to heaven. I feel the anointing all over me. Don't stop and talk to me. I won't be able to hear you over all the music and shouting. But receive. When hands are laid on you, say, Lord, I receive what I have need of. Let's say that out loud together. Lord, I receive. Just a minute. The Lord just spoke to me. There's people here, some kind of a sin, disobedience in his sight will keep you from receiving your answer tonight. If you're here, how many of you lift hands and say, there's not one thing between me and God? The Bible says these things are written that you may know you have life eternal. See that? A lot of folks didn't lift their hand. You that couldn't lift your hand. Would you like to know before you leave here tonight everything is right between you and the Lord? All right, lift your hand right where you're standing that didn't know that. All across the auditorium. 
Now pray this with us. Let's all pray it together. Say, Jesus, I refuse to let sin keep me from receiving. Satan, I'm through with you. I'm through with your mess. I will serve the Lord all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. And I believe, Father, you raised Jesus from the dead just for me. Amen. How many lift your hand again? You say, I prayed that with you and I believed it. Come up here in the front. Come quick. I want to bless you first. Come on. You raised your hand. It's all right. Come on. Come over here. Getting things right with God. Some of you raised your hand. You didn't come. I see you're ashamed of Jesus. That's your problem. I'm not ashamed of him. And I'm willing to stand publicly and confess everything's going to be all right. I lay my hands on you and I ask the Lord to fill you with a fresh anointing. Come here, son, a little closer. In Jesus' name. If you don't have a church, I want you to get in this one. Do what I tell you and you'll be blessed. Bring these lovely ladies over here so I can pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name, we receive you into the kingdom. No more doubt. Hallelujah. I want every one of you I just laid hands on. Ladies, I'm talking. I'm still talking. I just laid hands on you. I want you to follow Ben over there. Give him your name so I can pray for you by name. Would that be all right? Then you can get back in. Everybody ready? Because when I start laying hands, I'm not stopping. Everybody lift your right hand and say, Father, I receive from the Lord tonight. Pastor Ted, are you ready, Pastor? All right. Senior Pastor, sorry. The windows of heaven are open. Blessings are falling tonight. I've got joy, joy, joy in my soul. Jesus made everything right. Gave him my old tattered garment. Gave me a robe of pure wine. Feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm happy tonight. That's why I'm happy. That's why I'm happy. I've got joy. Joy, joy in my soul. Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment. Gave me the love of your life. And I'm feasting on men up from heaven. That's why I'm happy. Well, that's why I'm happy. That's why I'm happy. That's why I'm Joy, joy, joy in my soul. Jesus made everything right. Gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of new wine. And I'm feasting on men up from heaven. That's why I'm happy tonight. Tonight. I got joy, joy, joy in my soul. Jesus made everything right. Gave him my old tattered garment. Gave you a robe of your wine. And I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm happy.
why I'm happy tonight The windows of heaven are open And the blessings are falling tonight I got joy, joy, joy in my soul Jesus made everything right Gave him my old tattered garment I've got joy, joy, joy in my soul. All right, says Jesus. Well, I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure wine. And I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm happy tonight. The windows of heaven are open Blessings of holy tonight I got joy, joy, joy in my soul Jesus made everything right Gave him my old tattered garment Gave me a robe of your eyes what I wanted, got just what I wanted, I got just what I wanted from the Lord, I got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted from the Lord, well I got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted, I got just what I wanted from the Lord, I got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. I got Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire from the Lord. Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire from the Lord. Hey, well I got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted, I got just what I wanted from the Lord. I got just what I wanted, got what I wanted, got just what I wanted from the Lord. I got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted from the Lord. I got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted from the Lord. Come on, Brother Mark.
was what I wanted. Healing was what I wanted from the Lord. Healing was what I wanted. Healing was what I wanted. Healing was what I wanted from the Lord. Hey, joy was what I wanted. Joy was what I wanted. Joy was what I wanted from the Lord. Hey, joy what I wanted. Joy was what I wanted. Joy was what I wanted from the Lord. Joy was what I wanted. Joy was what I wanted. Joy was what I wanted from the Lord. Joy was what I wanted. Joy what I wanted. Joy. Yeah. <laughs> now I've got just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted. What I wanted from the Lord. Got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted, got just what I wanted. It's Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Call him up, tell him what you want. Well, it's Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Call him up, tell him what you want. If you need a miracle, tell him what you want. If you need a miracle, tell him what you want. If you need a miracle, tell him what you want. Call him up, tell him what you want. Well, if you need a breakthrough, tell him what you want. If you need a breakthrough, tell him what you want. If you need a breakthrough, tell him what you want. Call him up, tell him what you want. Well, if you need a breakthrough, tell him what you want. If you need a breakthrough, tell him what you want. If you need a breakthrough, tell him what you want. Call him up, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you got to call him up, tell him what you want. We'll call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Oh, it's Jesus on the main line now. Call him up, he's listening. Tell him what you want. Why don't you call him up, he's listening. Tell him what you want. Call him up, he's listening. Tell him what you want. Oh, it's Jesus on the main line now. We'll call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Oh, it's Jesus on the main. Come on, Tim.
Call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on the main line now. Oh, if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. He will answer. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. Oh, he'll answer. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. If you call on Jesus, he will answer, or he will answer. Oh, yes, he will. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power. The precious blood of the Lamb. Power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb.
the Lord baptized me. Well, it was on a Friday when the fire fell, when the fire fell, when the fire fell. It was on a Friday when the fire fell, and the Lord, he baptized me. It was on a Friday when the fire fell, when the fire fell, when the fire on a Friday when the fire filled and the Lord baptized me. It was on a Friday when the fire filled, when the fire filled. When the fire fell, it was on a Friday when the fire fell. Lord, he baptized me. It was on a Friday when the fire fell. Fire fell, fire fell. It was on a Friday when the fire fell. And the Lord baptized me. It was on a Friday when the fire fell, fire fell, when the fire fell. It was on a Friday when the fire fell, Lord, he baptized me.
Everybody jump on your feet. You're the easiest people to preach to that I've preached to in a long time. This is one of those means you wish you could go on right till we go to heaven. Happy music, happy people, beautiful things God is doing for his people. Sunday morning, if you don't have a home church, and even if you do, that's my, oh, that's that proselyte spirit. I rebuke But my son has really been anointed to preach the gospel. And uh, Bishop and I have gotten behind him. We're believing there will be a strong Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, running in the aisles, climbing the pews, shouting the victory, clapping of the hand, a Hammond organ like Martin plays with Martin on it. That kind of a church where we can come and be, I call it getting happy. Now, if you don't want to get happy, I have a list of churches you can go to. And you should be depressed by next midweek service. But I like this happy music. Don't forget our book table at the back, those special offers. I don't want to take anything home. You like cowboys, get that Western bug. Give it to someone that does, that isn't saved. Use it like a witnessing tool. I gave it to all the unsaved men where I live in West Virginia. And you know what one of them said? He said, would you do my funeral? I said, are you going somewhere, Sam? <laughs> he said, no. He said, I feel like you're my pastor. Bless his heart. Raised in the Catholic Church. But it is it's something God's anointing. I don't know how. And Sam's probably, I don't know, 70 or more. I don't know. Wonderful man. One of my precious brothers. And I'm thrilled what God's doing. Can you say amen? Tyler, stop pinching your son. Amen. His little boy's had enough. How many want to leave shouting? Rejoicing. Lord willing, we'll see you again. Go ahead, Teddy.